All right, here we are back for game number two, the knocker and UBC going at it. I do have to say, <laughs> this, is, this is one of my little like pet peeves about these competitive lobby games. These banners for UBC, very well done. Follow the, the formatting correctly. The knockers ones, not so perfectly done. <laughs> um, what you're actually seeing on the banners, if you can tell from behind the heroes, uh, they're actually just half of an image. It's half of their their team logo. Uh, the way Valve asks for the banner files is really stupid. It makes some sense if you think about it, but it's really it's really stupid. Is they ask for a square image, but cut in half. So they ask for you to do the front of the banner on the left half of the of the image and the back half of the banner on the right side. So if you put in a square image, half of it will be on the front of the banner, half of it will be on the back of the banner. So there, Valve has provided these templates, probably like 10 years ago at this point, that cut your banner in half and you can put your image onto the template so that it comes out looking like a, like a proper banner. Unfortunately, because those templates came out like 10 years ago and they're not referenced anywhere, if you've not seen them and you've not worked with banners before, you're just going to put a square image into <laughs> into the box that asks for a square image. And your banners are, are not going to come out looking like proper banners. <laughs> there we go. That was weird. I don't know why. Yeah, my camera didn't, didn't come out exactly right <laughs> for the first like five seconds that was that was weird i've not had that happen before anyway same play and we see the same the same sides as well so the knocker getting radiant for game number two as well make a very similar move out to the center with the smoke get the mid ward down early Look at this, level one meld, meld on top of the rune. Made possible because of the smoke. Rage for 30 minute game. Legend 2 mid. Yeah, so this is part of it. Challenger has some, some very strong teams in it. And again, I haven't looked through everyone's ranks. And I haven't looked through the team's ranks. Uh, but Challenger historically has had a lot of teams with top thousand immortal average uh i don't know how strong teams are here but i'd imagine there are some some good immortal players playing in the mid and safe lane roles typically anyway <laughs> ta with that meld gonna hit twice obviously he did wait for that cooldown to reset oh you're gonna find the first blood the so first blood in game number two much like game number one gonna go the way of the knocker I do have to say, I've been experimenting with this, uh, I forget what it's called, it's not directed camera, but it's uh, camera assist or camera focus assist, something like that, uh, for casting just the last couple of games, I've never, I'd never used it before, just hang on, with Haka kind of go aggro for this last kill, last mango, or not the last mango, but the last raise, gonna catch Tumbly Boy. So usually SF, you want to push out that first wave with the mangoes with the raises, but Hakob able to push out the hero instead and find the CS and the souls that way. And is he walking out to... Oh my goodness, he used his TP. What did he use his TP? Oh, he died. He got first blooded. Duh. Totally didn't put that connection together that he had to TP out to the mid lane. So the walk of shame for Ember, Ember already. That's a little bit of a disaster. <laughs> but yeah, definitely I have to talk up this this directed camera stuff. I don't know if uh, if it's made a difference. I wasn't using it the first day I did cast, so uh, the first day I was recording, I wasn't using it, and now I've 
I've started abusing it a little bit as I learn how it works exactly. But it should look a little better. I think it looks a little bit smoother to me. It definitely <laughs> lets me focus a little bit more on, on other parts of the screen while I let the camera do its thing. Up top, Mark. Not, not even needed. Wow, that stroke effect did way more damage than I was expecting. It's just level 1. Kind of crazy. So yeah, didn't really talk through the heroes, but we see a Naga up for UBC. Unfortunately, he's up against the Pango, so his illusions can kind of always be dealt with by the Swashbuckle. Out of mana now on Mark, so gonna be fine for the time being but the illusions in lane can be dealt with by the swashbuckle and then later on in the game they'll be disarmed a lot so very nice game to play pango in and on the other side you've got night stalker into ta uh it, it, in a 1v1 lane matchup this honestly isn't even that good either for the side of ubc ta uh, by the time it's nighttime, gonna have three points in refraction, I'd imagine. You just start maxing refraction here, and very hard for a Night Stalker to aggro on you, as he'll be the one getting aggroed on and run at and click down. Ogre and TA able to just supply the right click damage. Yeah, it feels like the Naka really came into this game with the stronger hero matchup. As well as judging from, from game number one, just a little bit more skill in, in based off UBC's uh, reaction. Saying their, their Legend 2 mid <laughs> wants to survive and he's going to be hunted through the trees. Already we see a two level difference open up. A nice slight dodge, but not going to matter. Hakub's got more raises, he's got the bot already, had a mango as well. Going to pick up both water runes for himself. Two kills in the mid lane for him. Nothing you like more in SF than uh, than finding kills uh, in addition to your CS. And you see him topping the charts in both. And wow, just four CS on the Ember. We <laughs> haven't been watching this lane. So I did jump around to, to look at some of the hero matchups. But four CS for Ember versus 27 and 10. On the SF side, Hawk of running away with the slain. 2k net worth lead opened up already. I don't want to sound too defeatist after five minutes of game number two, but the knocker looking very strong this game and leading the CS in all three lanes again. Gonna try and, and just run away with this game just like they did in, in game number one. So nighttime will come out, Refraction's burned off. Matt trying to aggro, but forced to back off as he did not have a creep wave coming with him. Middle lane is missing. Top oh, Naga has a salve, so. Was worried for a second <laughs> that Naga didn't have a salve and was gonna be stuck up in this lane. In the mid, Tumbly Boy, yeah, once again. Stepped up, he was able to get a wave full of CS, 10 CS, but goes down for it yet again. And a couple levels back, not ready to go to the jungle just yet. Really, really hard times, and you know, his other lanes aren't doing well either, so it's hard to pull a support from, from one of your side lanes when they're really not going as, that well either. And at this point, SF might be able to mad fight <laughs> the support and the Ember Spirit together. Rune is going to spawn down bottom. Hakko's going to be able to grab that. See if he does decide to, to go on a rotation with his raises now. He's going to pop the invis. Nope, he's going to head towards mid and, and look for Tumbly Boy. Tumbly Boy made the play up towards the bounty runes. Now he's going to step into vision here. <laughs> Hakko going to look for him. Gonna just chase him all the way back to the hard camp. Find some creeps here. And he's gonna take the creeps as well. <laughs> and we'll grab the kill to boot, so. 
Gonna swap over to net worth just because of the, the kill disparity already. 7 to 0 at 7 minutes. Paco gets a very deep ward. Usually this ward would be pretty... Maybe not useless, but wouldn't wouldn't be the best word at, at this point. Maybe you wanted a little bit further up in the jungle, but for the advantage they've got now, he can feel more than confident just running in like this. They actually did mi miss the raids online, so puts him in a little bit of a weird spot, but look, just look at the right click damage. Two clicks and a raise, all he needs. Matt came in from the TP, but he's just level four. Void committed, and Hakob thought about TPing, is going to cancel that as the roll did come up from Mark from the side. Roll catching through everybody. Another bounce onto the Nightstalker, Mark. No mana for his swashbuckle forward. And now, actually taking a lot of damage, they will be looked to be turned on and will be cleaned up by Tumbly by making the rotation. He is just level 5, even after that kill, but a big kill to get him something in this game because. Really, it's the first anything he's got in this game outside of a handful of creeps. But, Hakum calmly goes to the mid, bottles himself up a haste rune, and kind of run his way back top. Not even popping the haste, there's going to be four heroes here for the knocker. Now, haste's going to come out, but not going to be needed. Tumbly Boy, not even level 6, so doesn't have that remnant available. And he does go down. Now, this is the right counterplay. UBC moving towards the bot lane to try and find something while their top tower begins being sieged. TA with the refraction. She's going to try and just turn to click down because that's about the only play she has and is going to find the kill onto Matt. Wasn't sure that was going to come through. Tries to go invis. Not going to be able to hide there. Sentry dropped down. So we'll trade one for one. But UBC going to be more than happy with that trade. Up top. Tower did go down. And uh, Paco. Interested to see what he's doing. Really feels like SF in this game. Going to be the trend. Uh, the tone setter. Is 6-0 already. And whenever he's ready to to make plays around the map is, is when plays are going to happen around the map, like it or not, from the side of UBC. Level 10, nine and a half minutes. And yeah, he's going to make the move up towards top. Looks like he's just farming. See how soon he decides to maybe make a tower siege play. Very, very early to be talking about hitting a tier 2, but honestly, SF is one of the heroes that, that can decide to go and hit that tier 2 early if he does so choose. Probably one of the heroes we haven't been looking at is Naga Siren, but her lane was pretty sad. Like I said, against the Pango, you can never have the illusions out, and that's such a big deal for your laning stage. Trying to farm up now, but just level 7, so finally starting to get online. But it really does feel like the map's already being closed off. Uh... Oh, again, I, I, I don't know why I get these flipped so often. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, this war... You, you know what it is? It's because the... The green and, and the red, when I see the two greens next to each other, my mind just goes, my team. <laughs> Which is really stupid justification, but what I've got. Rolling Thunder gonna come through, Mark misses the jump, so Soulbind... Actually, Soulbind not gonna connect onto anything. Now it's finally gonna connect through Nightstalker. Mark, with the end of the roll, able to catch out, but Brock with the finger takes down Grimstroke and Pango. Looking to be in a little bit of trouble. Fuck, I'm just TP's in and gonna collect kills with the raise, Mark. No mana for a jump away, Matt trying to secure the kill under the tier 1 tower, will grab it. Fly himself down to the south. And a 2 for 1, so UBC, even with the net worth being 5k against them, able to find a favorable trade. The 
Rolling Thunder in that fight, just a little bit off the mark, so no Inkswell stun and no com immediate commit forward at least, I should say. <laughs> nice Stalker with that pig pull. Gonna get himself the hell out of dodge. But yeah, we see we see Haka uh, has queued up a Blink Dagger. He will actually have that momentarily. Just send his Courier out, so as soon as the Courier can come back, he's gonna have a Blink ready. And then we'll see how aggressive they do decide to play it. Looking forward towards Dark Willow, but she's able to pop the Shadow Realm and run up to the high ground. CTA. Able to just farm the entirety of the map. 7.2k, 10, 12 minutes in. It's uh, not quite the same pace as, as game number one, but will definitely do. Tumbly boy has a remnant ready, so gonna get out of there just fine. But yeah, blink dagger now on SF. And I just, I don't know. Naga, going for a, a Manta style. Gonna just try and accelerate her farm as much as possible. Gank gonna come forward. This time there's no remnant out. Silence gonna come through. Haka. Gonna claim another kill on Tumbly Boy. That makes him 8 and 0 for the game. Are gonna look for more Matt hiding underneath the tier 2. Her you're gonna go down, but. Looks like the hero should be just fine, as long as he doesn't poke his nose out too far. Sorry about that sharp camera jump. Still does take some getting used to, I was talking about the... The different camera settings I've been trying out, does take some... Good getting used to playing with them on. weird yeah it's changed my keybinds as, as well I've, I'm just noticing I think the issue is it it wants to replace my keybinds with like buttons that I play with so it's having trouble overwriting the buttons that I play with I think is the issue Or maybe something along the lines of, if I play with a button, it gets priority for that command. I don't know. Not the biggest deal. Don't mean to <laughs> stop casting the game, but uh, this one, it really is feeling like going to be a formality to clean up. That's Roshan acquired, Aegis ready on TA, and I'd be surprised if they didn't just walk up the high ground here. It's 15 minutes, but there's the Deso complete on the TA. SF with the Blink Dagger just showed off that he can blink and find a kill whenever. Yeah, up they go. Pango gonna make the rotation over. They'll have roll ready. And once the tower goes down, there's really not much threat to fighting up on the high ground for the side of the knocker. Song gonna come through from Naga, but what are you really setting up? They could look for a terrorize. Not even gonna toss that out, and Naga now just left alone on the front lines, trying to run away, but. Not going to make it out. Terrorize. Going to be off the mark. Catches the Grimstroke, but... TA, the only one forward. She does have the Aegis. So all that for just an Aegis. TA now. Doesn't have Refraction, so going to need to be a little bit careful as she backs off. Going to drag the Curse Crown over to Grim, but not going to matter. As UBC, I mean, they just don't have anything to commit forward. It's 16 minutes, and they're 10k behind. Simply don't have the tools to fight. Soulvine going to come through. TA gonna try and click into both of the heroes at the same time. Last right click will chase Tumbly Boy around. Slate of Fist not able to dodge it. And he will go down as well. Midrack's gonna be cleaned up. Buyback comes through from Ember. But TA able to just keep, keep clicking around. Haka now gonna blink forward with the Requiem. Actually gonna be off the mark as Tumbly Boy <laughs> did go down before the Requiem was done channeling. I guess done casting, right? It's not a, not a channel anymore. Smiley face comes out. GG not yet called, but will be soon to come. 
And you can't hate on it too much. I mean, sometimes it it feels bad going up against a team that just outskills you. But uh, it, it's one of those things with the Swiss format. Week one, you're going to get paired against whoever. UBC. Hopefully they're able to find uh, some success, or hopefully they're able to find some some matches later on in the season as time goes. Again, I'm not sure. Yeah, GG can be called. I'm not sure what the, the MMR balance of the of the teams really looks like. If the Knockers are a really strong team, if UBC maybe just a bit weaker of a team, or if these teams are somewhere in the middle. I mean, we will see as the season goes on. It'll be very exciting. Fortunately, we're going to see uh, most of these teams again in the playoffs, so 12 teams in the Challenger Division, top 8 going to make it to the playoffs and and continue on, so only 4 teams going to go out. So UBC, it's not like they lost one game and they're they're totally eliminated from the season, but just because they got they got rolled in this one doesn't mean they're, they're not fighting for a place, so good best of two and the knocker going to claim it convincingly.